Hi, welcome back to the Weekly Why. This week we are starting the third book of the Torah, which is Leviticus or Vayikra. And the first Parsha of the book of uh, Leviticus or Vayikra is called Parsha Vayikra. Uh, now again, the first first book of the Torah was Genesis or Bereshit, second one was Exodus or Shemot, and this one again is Vayikra uh, or Leviticus. Now, you, as you might be able to tell by the English name Leviticus, uh, this book is primarily about the uh, temple sacrifices again carried out by the Levites, i.e. Leviticus. And so I want to talk a little bit tonight about uh, exactly what the meaning of these sacrifices are. It seems like a very strange thing, the concept of sacrifices, you know. Uh, Judaism seems like a much more sophisticated uh, religion, and it seems very odd that this almost seems like a throwback to paganism, you know, that we're sacrificing uh, animals to, you know, appease the gods. And so I want to just address exactly what the concept of sacrifice in Judaism was, and what the idea and some of the contemporary views that we can take from it. Um, so firstly, there were many different sacrifices. Um, there were sin sacrifices, if you had uh, done an unintentional sin. As a side point, um, for, if someone had done an intentional sin, they couldn't bring a sacrifice. It was only because of an unintentional sin, i.e. lighting a fire on Shabbat, even though because you thought it was Tuesday. Okay? So there were sin offerings, there were guilt offerings, there were meal offerings, all sorts of different, uh, different sacrifices. But still, the idea remains, you know, what is, is it the point of these? Again, not all of these had to do with animals, not all of them had to do with blood, some had to do with flour. Uh, but again, particularly the, the, the animal sacrifice is particularly objectionable. But again, any of these concepts seems very strange. You know, what is God, who's without time and space, who always has been, always will be, creator of the universe, needs me to bring, you know, a quart of flour to a temple in a hill in Jerusalem? It seems very strange, you know, what can this literally and logically, what can this God possibly get from me? What can I possibly offer him? Okay, so uh, I want to just uh, talk a little bit about uh, the the word for sacrifice. The the Hebrew word for sacrifice not doesn't mean sacrifice. It's korban. Um, now the uh, 19th century rabbi, Rabbi uh, Samson Raphael Hirsch, he taught that really the the root word of this uh, is the the term being close. So it's not necessarily a sacrifice in the sense that we are uh, we have to God needs this thing, but it's this act is something that gains a certain clo um, closeness with God. And so really what this is, is that in, in terms of the uh, animal sacrifice, for example, a sin offering, let's take a look at that, for example. You know, you've done something wrong, an unintentional sin, sin and, uh, you know, you, you go and you take an innocent animal and you kill it. And so one of the ideas from that is that certainly one of the, uh, the concepts that are... Uh, commentators had said was that it's supposed to be this shocking wake-up call for you, you know? You see this innocent animal, this cute little fluffy, uh, you know, lamb, and you kill it. And the idea is that this is supposed to be an incredible shock that is supposed to throw you right back into reality and make you realize, whoa, you know, I've done something wrong, like, that should be me in a sense. Again, not necessarily that making a mistake, you know, one should die, but it means it's supposed to kind of wake you up and realize that just how uh, sometimes the, uh, the consequences of our actions. So again, that was supposed to be the wake up there. Um, but again, with that said, it is very important to know that uh, the Tanakh, the Hebrew scriptures, and again, the Jewish teaching has never said that sacrifice in itself was like this, um, was like this ultimate purchase, you know, you made a sacrifice, you know, you did something wrong, you bring a sacrifice. You could, you know, do that Monday, and then Tuesday you did the same thing wrong, and you go and do the sacrifice. It doesn't work like that, right? That was the paganism thing, you know, you want something from the gods, you know, you kill a virgin, and, and you, you would get what you wanted. It's not like that at all. In fact, uh, there are a number of places, the book of Mishle, or Proverbs, says, you know, the sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination. An abomination, right? If you've done something wrong and you're bringing a sacrifice just because you want to appease God, that's not just not okay. That just not only doesn't work, that's infuriating to God, right? Um, and this is a good example of that, or a good analogy. Let's say you were, for example, married and your wife um, didn't like you coming home at 3 a.m. You're always coming home at 3 a.m. She hated that. And so you kept doing it again and again and again. And then one night uh, you, you come home, you know, and drunk at 3 a.m. and you say, oh shoot, you know, she's very angry, I should, uh, I should do something. So you give her, you know, you buy flowers and chocolates and you come in and give it to her. And you don't apologize, you're not apologetic or sad or anything like that. And you just, you know, basically throw these flowers and, and uh, chocolates at her. The question is, what's her reaction going to be? She's not only not going to be happy, she's going to be furious with you, right? You're trying to buy her off, how insulting, she's going to be furious, it's not going to work at all. 
But however, consider that, let's say you came back and you were you know, apologetic and regretful, you realized you made a mistake, but you didn't in fact have a sacrifice. Again, that person presumably would be much more accommodating and, and uh, accepting, even though you didn't have the sacrifice. Again, that didn't say that in the temple period we could just choose not to do it or not, but the idea is that without a temple, it is not necessarily um, uh, kind of a, a, a fatal omission that the, we, we don't have, you know. And again, just to tell you that this was not the most essential thing. This was only a symbol of our repentance, the sin offering, for example. It was only a symbol of where we're coming with God. First chapter of Isaiah, you know, Isaiah says, you know, of what use are your many sacrifices to me? You know, blood of uh, sheep and goats and bulls, you know, I do not want. So he's saying, not that he doesn't want you to bring sacrifices to the temples there, but don't get your mind set up in thinking that the externalities are the most important thing, okay? It's only a symbol, okay? It's only a symbol of what should be going on internally. You've seen an innocent animal killed? It's not about the animal, it's about what's going on inside, okay? And uh, just a, a few, uh, one other key idea from this is that uh, closer to the end of the Parsha, uh, Moses is telling the people about what happens when the people sin, when there's a communal mistake, when they, when they screw up as a people. And it says that the entire assembly of Israel shall make a mistake, and the elders will lean their hands upon the head of the bull in front of God. It's an interesting idea, is that why is it that the leaders are now being culpable for the, uh, the actions of the people? And again, the idea is here is that as a leader, and that everyone in the Jewish people is in some sense a leader, everyone has people who are followed, you can't escape that level of responsibility. And again, we can look at that as responsibility or opportunity, but the idea is that when they are doing something, ultimately, the entire Jewish people are looking at, at them and following them. So when we're doing something, we can't just think that the actions begin and end with us. We have to realize that when other people are doing something, if they're looking to us, can be friends, acquaintances, colleagues, family members, that ultimately our actions will have a direct influence on them. So we need to um, definitely pay attention to that and recognize that not only can we you know, are we responsible if they do something wrong? But ultimately, we can uh, we can uh, take credit when they when they do something right. We can claim credit for that when something has been done. So again, quick recap of the uh, parsha Vayikra. The idea of sacrifices was not an, was not an end in itself. It was only means an, means to an end. Okay, it was only supposed to be an external symbol of something which was happening internally. It was not you know like a quick purchase, like a quid pro quo. You make a purchase and God, you know, you bring a sacrifice and God forgives. Not like that at all. If you didn't have the internal change, if you if your mind and heart weren't there, then the sacrifice didn't just do nothing. It was extremely uh, offensive to God. Okay, so that's the idea. Hopefully, we can take that internally when we're doing something. You know, when we're fulfilling a mitzvah, when we're praying, when we're you know cleaning the house for Passover, we're at a seder. Again, it's not the external which matters. Again, the external is important, but again, it should only be as a uh, you know if our mind and heart are in the right place for that. Okay, best wishes, Shabbat Shalom, and take care.